Every journey begins in the mind. <laughs> or within the deepest regions of the subconscious. In 1985, legendary film producer Charles Band sent a team to his sprawling film studio in Rome, Italy. The mission? To create one of the most ambitious film productions he'd ever produced. From Beyond was a wild, monster-filled, sexy, and sometimes slimy tale inspired by the H.P. Lovecraft story of the same name. I got my start working for uh, John Beekler's MMI shop, which provided all of the special effects for Empire Pictures back in the day. And uh, after working for them for about a year, I was sent to Spain and eventually sent to the Empire Studios to work on my first movie in Italy, which was From Beyond. The studio was an incredible place and it was an incredible time. It was only accentuated by the fact that we got to work with a genius by the name of Stuart Gordon on a movie called From Beyond. Fresh off the success he'd garnered from his wildly popular horror film, Reanimator, also distributed by Empire Pictures. Celebrated genre director Stuart Gordon helmed the project, which also became a massive fan favorite. Many years and dozens of movies later, Full Moon is still going strong, with no end in sight. Recently announcing a new slate of films and series, airing on both Amazon Prime and the Full Moon Features app. The subject got brought up, um, let's do something old school with sort of an old school empire vibe to it. And um, uh, for the first thing I thought was, let's pay homage to From Beyond. And while the project that we're doing now is, is certainly not a remake or a uh, reboot, um, I could not help but to be deeply affected by how beautiful the original film was, and certainly uh, Stewart's sense of humor and unbridled taste for grisliness. The Resonator, Miskatonic You is first of several new productions to be released each month as a part of Full Moon's ever-growing array of ongoing original content. This is Behind the Scenes, The Resonator, Miskatonic U. The story takes place at Miskatonic University, the fictional college campus located in Arkham, Massachusetts, where all sorts of unexplained phenomenon are unfolding especially for Crawford Tillinghast, who's been trying to complete his dead father's attempts to build a mysterious device called the Resonator. My name is Dane Oliver, and I play Crawford Tillinghast. Huh? Crawford is brilliant, fearless in the face of the unknown, uh, sort of a leader by default. Crawford is a hero who's always one really bad day away from being a supervillain. Professor Gordon said there's some components missing from his lab. Electronics, cable, Plutonium? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Not really my style. The headmaster of Miskatonic U is portrayed by veteran actor Michael Perre, who is no stranger to both sci-fi and H.P. Lovecraft's work. I had worked with Billy Butler before on a movie called The Furnace, and he called me and he said, Michael, I'm doing it. Uh, the Miskatonic U uh, resonator. And I said, is that from, the, from beyond? And he says, exactly. And I said, oh, man. Uh, you know, H.P. Lovecraft is one of those giants of uh, sci-fi and sci-fi horror. You know, um, you know, he's like Edgar Allan Poe. You want to be in something that's based on great material. So when he called and asked me, I said, yes, I get to play a brilliant scientist who's dealing with very complex ideas, you know, and I play a lot of characters. But when I get to play a smart guy, it's 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 just fun. But Crawford's not alone in his unorthodox research. He's got a gifted group of friends to help him, some of which have their own interests in the unknown. So my name is Amanda Jones, and I play the role of Carrie. She's so focused on everything paranormal. She's a paranormal studies major, and she's been this way since she was a little girl. She's always kind of finding herself in these empty, abandoned warehouses. She's carrying her own gadgets just to track the energy forces in the field, and she would much rather be sitting in a dark room with a Ouija board than at a frat party any day. That's exactly who Carrie is, so. Ladies. Hey, Brandon. I gotta go. Wow, well, happy Friday to you, too. My name is Austin Woods, and I play Brandon. Crawford Tillinghast, always going the extra mile. Brandon is a heavily studied medical student. He's the kid that the work hard, play hard stereotype, that's Brandon. 
like parties incredibly hard, but still wakes up at 5 a.m. to study for his exam. Obsessive personality. Let's get this party started. I read it and I really liked it. And I was like, I have to get this. I have to get this part. My character, Mara, she's a pre-med student at Miskatonic. She's dating Crawford, who's like, you know, the two really smart students at Miskatonic U that get into all sorts of trouble. Um, you didn't tell anyone, did you? <laughs> Hell no, man. People can figure out that you're nuts on their own time. The character of Bear Johnson is sort of isolated from the rest of the cast in the sense that he pushes the plot forward by constantly asking what the hell is going on because he doesn't really buy into this entire you know anything that's beyond the realm of girls and football it's just not for him mr tillingast actress amanda wiss from classic films like the original nightmare on elm street Crawford. and fast times at ridgemont high plays professor katherine mcmichaels and she's a professor of spiritual studies she approaches the world from a 100% spiritual and uh, magical perspective. So um, I think at once she creates a balance at, at the university, but she's also at odds. It's really a voice of conflict. Do God, heaven, and hell exist? Religious ideologies were created to control simple minds. You sound sure of yourself. I appear to not like Crawford or have conflict with him or at odds with him. And um, there may or may not be personal reasons that we discover for that that can be very juicy. In a future that grows ever closer, the fate of our Earth will lie in the hands of one man, a solitary warrior of great courage. His name is Dogen, and he is called the Finder. Longtime Full Moon and Empire Picture fans will also be happy to find a familiar face from their old school classic movies. My name is Jeffrey Byron, and I play the role of Professor Philip Tillingast. They might know me from a little movie called Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Sin, and then another great film I did for Charlie Band called The Dungeon Master. It was really one of the great moments in my life, and Charlie was wonderful, and Charlie had uh, put together an incredible crew and, and um, legendary cinematographer named Mac Albert, and then special effects people led by John Beaker. There are things in our universe not meant for the eyes of mortals. Professor uh, Tillingas is a scientist. He and a colleague, Professor Wallace, invented and created this incredible, mind-blowing machine called the Resonator. The Resonator opens portals to different dimensions that we can't see or that people don't know exist. These sonic vibrations stimulate the pineal gland and it causes you to, at first, um, have like an erotic bodily emotion and then you start to see into parallel universes or different dimensions and you start to see the creatures that lie in there. But that can cause a lot of problems if somebody doesn't know what they're doing. Well, what I loved about being on set was seeing how many of the effects were practical. All these practical effects, the, the special effects makeup and puppets. Director William Butler was determined to pack the project with as many practical effects as possible in hopes of keeping that old school Empire Pictures vibe super important to me that we had absolutely as many rubber monsters as we could in this project and we achieved that i wanted as very, as very little cgi augmentation as possible we came up with monster suits and puppets and you know sometimes we put a little glow on them to give them that uh, you know that uh, resonator vibe but i was really happy at the amount of uh, of actual monsters that we had in it. And I, I really think that it helped the, the actors uh, perform it. Greg Leitner, and I was the makeup department head and fellow monster creator with William Butler. I obviously knew it was gonna be Lovecraftian. Um, tentacles were probably the key component to doing Lovecraftian, but the designs came really from reading the script and kind of envisioning what those needs were. And then there was moments when we just played with it. It's definitely a non-back old school. If you love the classics, if you love old
middle school. I think you're going to enjoy a, a true throwback and a true practical effects direction that we took on this. Fans are gonna love it and be, you know, clamoring for more. And then there's all of that glorious slime. Acting covered in goo is sticky. Slime and blood. Oh God. It's so messy being covered in blood. Buckets and buckets of slime. 20 gallons of slime. Oh my gosh. Blood not as much, it's about two, two gallons of blood. I mean, you'll see, it's just little traces here and there. Preparing for a film that involves this much uh, blood and guts and slime, I usually buy doubles and sometimes even triples of an actor's wardrobe. And even then, being on set, you know, things explode and you're not expecting it to. I myself got uh, sprayed with blood at one point. This is why on productions like this that my director's table is like a hundred feet away from the shooting area because you never know what's going to come flying across the room. Poor Dane, you know, gets the majority of the slime and the blood. You don't really notice it until you try to then take your shirt off at the end of the day and you realize that it doesn't want to come. Dane had a day where it just got progressively worse. It started off with a little bit of slime viscous slime uh, and then it just kept going from there he got progressively slimier he gets blood sprayed on him he gets blood in his mouth whenever he attacks one of the monsters he gets beat up so now he has nose blood uh blood coming from his forehead like at the end of the day i'm sure there wasn't a crevice in his body that w didn't have some sort of slimy or bloody matter inside of it Great effort was put into the design and construction of the resonator itself. After all, it is the device that makes it all happen. I'm Dave Lowe. I was the resonator designer, creator, and art director on the resonator, Miss Katonic U. When Billy first called me and said, you want to do this? I was like, absolutely. It, it sounds like a great project. Only a few days later that I realized that the movie was being named after the prop I'm making which automatically, a little pressure. And then a week later, a teaser poster came out, no pressure at all. I didn't feel any pressure. Based on the original From Beyond Resonator, the, the original had such an iconic uh, classic silhouette. It was just a large center base, had the, the tongs, the tuning forks that were spinning, and a globe. And that's a great silhouette. So, so when I, my design, when I first designed it, I wanted to keep that. I wanted to keep that kind of look as an homage to the original. After that, I decided to Kaluthu it up, you know, give it a little more Lovecraftian feel by adding a lot of dangly cables and other weirdness. So it kind of had, and when you see it, it's got like red lights around the top so that it always feels like it's watching you. Like it's alive when it's not even turned on. My history with Charlie goes all the way back to 1984 when uh, we shot a quick clip for the, a trailer for the movie Trancers in the closet at Empire Studios where I was a robot and I ripped my face off. That led on to that we did everything in the Empire Studios in Rome, starting with the original From Beyond. I was glad that the timing worked out that uh, when Bill called me that he was going to do the Resonator Miskatonic U, which is basically an homage to From Beyond. I just wanted to try to help out. Hey Mike, how's it going? Hey, pretty good, huh? So good to work with you again. Hey, yeah, it's so nice for 10 years right, to come back. Remember when I said I promise it won't be bad? Yeah, I do. When I walked on set and then I saw Dave Lowe's Resonator, I was like very impressed because it literally brought me back to Italy in the 80s when uh, Bill and I started there. Um, the, the, we had the benefit of trying to like uh, emulate uh, Mac Olberg's camera work with the Mylar and the colored lights. And we were there to see how that movie was originally done and to see Bill actually recreating a lot of aspects on that so you had the same feel. It, it was a great experience. And I'm very glad that he asked me to be part of it because it did make me feel a little bit like I was back in the 80s again, you know, a kid doing this kind of stuff. I think the fans can expect an adventure, uh, an adventure set in a world where so much world building has been done and we have such a rich backdrop to play against with all that Lovecraft created and all the authors that came after him created. 
But I think what makes this a lot of fun is that new fans alike can come in and, you know, maybe the younger generation that we're not accustomed to can really gain an understanding and excitement for Lovecraftian horror and uh, the resonator and all things involved there. Get excited. I think it has everything in it. It's monsters, it has goo, it has sex appeal element as well. I think you need that. Do I get naked? I'm just gonna have to tune in and find out. It has it all. Really, Charlie Band brought it to a new level. I mean, it's a great experience. I'm thrilled to be a part of it. This just reminds me of old school, you know, like Nightmare on Elm Street. I hope you like watching it as much as Charlie and I loved creating it. We did it. It's really powerful. You know, it, it, I mean, it's such so fertile for the imagination. It's, it's, it's a great subject for uh, sci-fi horror. You know, all these sci-fi people are going to go nuts for it. I think Stuart Gordon uh, might might approve of what was going on with the new Resonator. Uh, at the very least, it almost felt like he was there with us in spirit. And I even said to Bill, I'm sad. It's like, uh, you know, it's almost like Stuart is like in the room here. There's a, there's a little bit of vibe on that. So in spirit, in one way or the other, he was definitely there and part of the project. I, I uh, love Stuart Gordon very much, and I miss him terribly. And, uh, you know, I just know in my heart that he would be happy with what we came up with because it came from a complete and total uh, loving place about how we all feel about both him and his creativity. The Resonator, Miskatonic U, premieres February 26th on Amazon Prime and on the Full Moon Features app.